This is part 11 of my respectful rebuttal of Richard Gage's 9-11 video, Blueprint for Truth. For many, the thermitic materials allegedly found in the World Trade Center dust in 2009 is the strongest argument for controlled demolition, and I hope we can all have the chance to see this matter resolved once and for all. In our March 6, 2011 debate, Richard threw down the gauntlet and demanded that I explain, quote, the red-grade chips of advanced energetic nanothermitic composite material found in the WTC dust, or the debate is over. Here's what we're talking about, because there's one thing that Richard Gage and other 9-11 researchers can do to bring this debate into the scientific mainstream overnight, and I'll explain that momentarily. In 2009, an article appeared in Bentham's Open Chemical Physics Journal, purporting to have found the ignition of these peculiar red-gray chips. The red portion of these chips is found to be unreacted thermitic material and highly energetic. That's tons of high-grade explosives. The article is, is titled, Active Thermitic Material Discovered in the Dust from the 9-11 World Trade Center Catastrophe by Niels H. Herrett, Jeffrey Farrer, Stephen E. Jones, Kevin R. Ryan, Frank M. Leggy, Daniel Farnsworth, Greg Roberts, James R. Gourley, and Bradley R. Larson. The experiments included spectrographic analysis of the chemical compounds, measuring the energy released in the burning of the chips, various physical processes to isolate the chemical compounds in the dust, and more. The four dust samples were received from individuals who had collected the World Trade Center dust near the collapse zone very shortly after 9-11 and their locations and times were carefully tracked to establish the best possible chain of custody and to reduce the possibility of contamination from the debris removal processes. I believe that debris removal contamination is almost certainly not a factor in the collection of this dust. There is one nanothermitic article that was written shortly before 9-11 from Lawrence Livermore researcher T.M. Tillotson and others. The paper is entitled Nanostructured Energetic Materials using sol gel methodologies. It was published in the Journal of Non-Crystalline Solids in May 2001. Herod and Jones used the results of this paper to compare their findings with those of a known nanothermite. Tillotson discovered that nanothermites burn faster, can be hazardous, but can be contained in an aqueous medium for safety. Oxidation of the aluminum up to 70% can decrease the efficiency of nanothermites and limits its potential for mass transportation. The lab experiments from May of 2001 tell me the nanothermites were still in the development stage by 9-11. Ryan Mackey claims nanothermite is at best a low explosive because the thermite reaction starts with iron oxide and aluminum and produces aluminum oxide and iron. So it doesn't produce any gases and there's no source for a shock wave. But a paper titled Synthesis and Characterization of Mixed Metal Oxide Nanocomposite Energetic Materials says, Quote, we have developed a new method of making nanostructured engine energetic materials, specifically explosives. If that's true, this is evidence that nanothermites can be made into explosives. So if an experiment could prove that the presence of nanothermites in the World Trade Center dust were really there, then this whole argument about whether nanothermites are good or not is moot. So here are reasons both for and against accepting the argument for nanothermites. I'll start by adding the arguments against to my long list of reasons not to believe in the controlled demolition theory.